Hello and welcome. About uh, two years ago, I prepared and analyzed a sample of tuna for its mercury content, and I regretfully said this. Unfortunately, I can't do the analysis myself, although I was really hoping for. Uh, I was really looking forward to get this uh, UV spectrometer. Well, this idea stayed in my mind, and, uh, and I came up with this uh, contraption. This is an older UV absorbance spectrophotometer that operates on two wavelengths. 254 and 214 nanometers and that thing is quite sensitive you can look at it funny and you'll get a signal mercury vapors can be detected from the 253.7 nanometers wavelength at which it absorbs light uh, mercury in the environment can be found in three forms metallic mercury inorganic mercury and uh, organic mercury however only the metal can be detected with this setup so a suitable preparation is necessary to even the playing field and get consistent results the EPA method 245.1 has a complete description of the correct preparation for water samples. I leave the link in the description if you're interested in reading it. But because I'm dealing with uh, tissue samples, the correct method would be the 7474, link in the description as well. But my equipment is not uh, professional. I have no official certification. I am certainly not a reference on anything and I do not receive any compensation for my work. And remember, I just do this for fun. Anyways. The setup is pretty simple and goes like this. I use low pressure helium to bubble in the solution of 25 milliliters of the samples to be analyzed. The mercury vapors are carried to the cell inside the UV detector and the signal is recorded on the computer. I then perform a calibration with a solution of 1 ppm. I prepare from a 1000 ppm stock standard I was able to use. And with this setup, I can reliably pick up between 10 and 50 parts per billion of mercury with a correlation coefficient above 98%. Uh, I'm sure I could do better if I wasn't so sloppy sometimes. So uh, not bad for some uh, amateur setup. Now the uh, sample requires a few steps and uh, this is what I came up with. So I weighed out about 5 grams of samples and a blank and add 1.25 ml of 0.5 normal sulfuric acid. I add also 0.75 ml of 1 to 1 nitric acid, 2 ml of a solution of 5% potassium persulfate, and 3.75 ml of 5% potassium permanganate. All these oxidizers are necessary to get mercury in the same oxidation state and reduce interference due to copper and chlorine. The sample is then digested at 95 degrees for 2 hours. And when cool, I add 1.5 ml of 12% hydroxylamine hydrochloride to clean up the permanganate. And finally, 1 ml of stannous chloride at 0.5 normal to reduce uh, mercury to its metallic form. So I went out uh, shopping for some fish, and here's my results, again. Oh, I was gonna do locks, but I'm sorry, that shit is just too good to waste. My blank came out at uh, 50 ppb, but because my calibration it's not reliable, below about 50 ppb, it's uh, difficult to make sense of it and the following results. The tuna in a can was measured just above that at about 70 and the tuna steak was just below it at 60. Now the swordfish gave me a higher reading at about 150. And to top it off, the cat food is 2240 ppb or 2.2 ppm, which is alarming really. So, should you stop eating cat food? or feeding it to your 10 pound pet? Well, get the dry food or the one without the fish instead. It has been reported that swordfish, shark, and marlin have higher concentration of mercury. As a rule of thumb, the bigger the fish, the higher the mercury concentration. But don't panic yet. Most of the mercury ingested by the body leaves through natural processes without assimilations. Although my results are consistent with the officially reported values, my analysis are for entertainment only and have no value beyond that. So if you're into funny chemicals, may I suggest either extraction and fire or explosion and fire. Same channel, lots of interesting videos, fun and educational. Highly recommended. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, thumbs up, rate, constructive criticism is always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. If you feel like it, check out my Patreon and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.